just after actually I was born, my father was working in Japan and he was then stationed to Singapore. So we moved to Singapore for about a year and a half, maybe nearly two years when I was just an infant, a toddler. We then moved back to Japan for several years. And once again, because of his work, we were stationed, we were transferred actually to New York. And we lived in New York for a year. I went to primary school. My first year of primary school was, uh, was in New York. And then he was transferred back to Japan again. So I spent uh, probably my primary year two, three, and uh, a little bit of four in Japan. It was, I think, I think I was born as a hafu, and a very good time to be born as a hafu, okay? Because uh, I do have friends who are older than I am, around about 10 or 15 years older, who are also half Japanese, half Australian, or half Japanese, half other countries, nationalities. Um, and their experience is slightly different, quite different actually from mine. Um, I had only, uh, advantages to being born a half and living as a half in Japan. I don't, I cannot recall even one time where I was subjected to any uh, racism or um, any form of, uh, you know, denigration because I was not fully Japanese. Although I grew up um, as an Australian in Japan, because at that time when I was born in Japan, you could um, only become the nationality of your father. The laws changed several years later, and that's when you could actually acquire both citizenships of both your mother and your father if you had parents with different citizenship. Um, but at the time that I was born, it was only your father's citizenship. So I was, well, I was, I was. I was told I was an Australian, I was brought up as an Australian, um, but obviously I could speak Japanese and I had a Japanese heritage. So when I came to Australia, all of a sudden, there are two things that probably shocked me to start with. One, it was not the same green that I had envisioned as far as the lush sort of Northern American forests or the European sort of lush greenness. Um, it was a, a, a much more sort of haunting type of nature here, uh, a very different type of nature. And the second thing was, all of a sudden, I wasn't an Australian. I was told by everybody that I was Japanese. So there were sort of probably two elements of, of a bit of a, a, sh a culture shock, if you like, uh, when I moved across to Australia, yes. It was it was a it was a big challenge, okay, uh, especially for you know someone who's only eight or nine years old. Um, to I think the difference I guess they, they people look at what is different in you, and um, and all of a sudden I was told. I wasn't what I had identified myself as being. And it wasn't like I then carried a Japanese passport or anything either. So in a sense, it was as if you were being rejected from, um, from what you thought you belonged to. There was actually only one Chinese person in the school that I was in at the time. So Asia was not so big at that time, perhaps. And more, it was maybe more the fact that there was the difference of the Asian in me rather than, you know, just being a different nationality or a different background as such. Um, that's what was really, I think, quite, quite interesting. Now I can say it was interesting. Before, I, 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 I found it very disturbing, I think. And that was a good choice for me. Uh, where I could then um, associate with people from all types of different countries. And uh, we were like a mini UN in there. There were about 40, 49 or 50 different nationalities being represented in our international school. 
um, and everyone very well travelled as well. So uh, it was a very different um, environment to be in, uh, and one I found I really did belong to, yes. When I speak to my clients, uh, I know how to speak so that it is easily understood. Um, and that comes from having spoken to uh, a lot of people where English is not their first language. Um, it, it's a, it, some people, I think, need to be very careful uh, when they assess someone and their English is not so good. Uh, their assessment of that person, obviously, is is less. Uh, we always have to keep in mind that English is their second language. They're, they're, they can actually speak a language um, perfectly or as a native. And this is another language that they're actually speaking. And so you need to turn around and say, well, what other languages do you speak? You know, you can't put someone down because their English is not so good. Yeah. Oh, home is where I am. It's definitely just where I am at that point in time. Um, I will fly into Narita and feel like I've never left. You know, I just feel very much at home there. I, I, that is home, even though I'm not there permanently. And I haven't been there permanently for a long time, but I've gone back every single year, and sometimes five times a year, just with work, etc. Um, but Sydney is home for me as well. I fly into Sydney and there's blue skies and this. I was like, oh wow, okay, this is definitely home for me. But then I'll go to Paris where I lived only for a year and I feel, oh, yes, this is, I feel good here. This is, this is right. Home is where you make it and it can be anywhere. I think that's what transnational means, yeah.